Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a thriller and action movie from 2009 called Echelon Conspiracy. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie begins in Washington DC where Miss Dolan, a Pentagon security expert, is on her way to catch a subway. As she navigates the platform, someone is secretly watching her. She then receives a text instructing her not to board the train but to head to the tunnel instead. Inside the tunnel, another message directs her to a specific crossing labeled 1114. She finds nothing there, but suddenly a train approaches. She runs and leaps to another track, only to be struck by an oncoming train. A few weeks later, we meet Max, a young American ethical hacker traveling to Bangkok to update a company's security systems. He demonstrates how to shut down and restore a server using a belt and a secure drive to the company's owner. After completing his work, he checks into a nearby hotel. Despite not ordering anything at the hotel, he accepts a package left for him and finds a new phone inside. He's also being watched. Later, he gets a text suggesting he extend his stay due to discounted hotel rates. Meanwhile, in Moscow, someone notes that Max's new phone is now active. Enjoying a discounted happy hour, Max receives a message advising him to invest in a company called Scissor. He does, and the stock value triples overnight. When Max plans to leave Bangkok, another text directs him to Prague. There, a taxi driver named Yuri, who speaks English and claims to be a hacker too, offers his services. Another message sends Max to a specific slot machine in a casino. He finds someone already there but buys him off. Following the instructions from his texts, Max wins big on his fourth attempt. In the casino's control room, John, a former FBI agent and the security manager, watches Max closely. They check Max's background, finding he has no criminal record. Max is then guided by text to bet all his chips at a blackjack table where he wins again. Caught using his phone, which is against casino rules, Max claims he was texting his mom. He steps outside and calls Yuri for help. Returning to the hotel, Max encounters Camilla and they connect instantly. Her jealous boyfriend tries to attack her, but Max intervenes and is knocked unconscious. Meanwhile, while Max is unconscious, Camilla takes his phone and scans it. When Max wakes up, he sees Camilla smiling. She informs him that security has removed her boyfriend. Max talks to her and discovers she's American. Before pursuing his gambling adventures, Max enlists Yuri, a taxi driver and hacker. Yuri provides Max with a text-to-voice earpiece to receive his mysterious and profitable messages. Yuri checks Max's phone and offers to identify the sender, but he needs his equipment back in Russia. Max pays him 100 euros for his help. Following the instructions via his earpiece, Max wins a 3 million euro jackpot at a slot machine. As security guards start to approach, Max runs away but is stopped by FBI agent Dave Grant. John, who knows Agent Grant from their previous work together, arrives on the scene. Grant declares that Max is now the FBI's responsibility, not the casinos, and takes him to an isolated warehouse for further interrogation. During the interrogation, Grant questions Max about where he got the phone. Max explains it was sent to him anonymously. Grant leaves, somewhat believing Max's story. John later tells Grant that his superiors want Max back to learn how he outsmarted their casino. Grant responds that it's out of his hands, mentioning that similar mysterious phones were linked to other unusual activities, including a death. They agree to collaborate to uncover who is behind the mysterious text. They release Max, telling him they need his help to trace the sender. Back in Maryland, Raymond Burke, head of the NSA, receives a call from Agent Grant, who assures him they're monitoring Max. In Prague, Mueller, the casino owner, learns from John about the FBI's involvement in the mysterious sender. The next day, Max meets Camilla at a bar where they discuss their careers. As a guard from John approaches, Max leaves, promising to see Camilla the next day. Agent Grant and John plan to give Max 100,000 euros in chips to lure out the mysterious texter. They hope to trace at least three texts from the sender with the NSA's help. In the casino, as Max turns on his phone, he receives a text directing him to table 17. The tracking team gets closer to locating the sender. However, Max loses the game when the cards play against him. As they nearly trace the sender, Raymond abruptly orders them to abort the mission. Shocked, they comply. Then, Raymond instructs Grant to bring Max in, warning Max not to turn off his phone under threat of death. At headquarters, Raymond informs a technician that the messages originated from the Echelon security system, which he suspects has been hacked. He orders the technician to check for any security breaches. Meanwhile, guards escort Max away. 
In Prague, John meets with Mueller and updates him about the situation, including the deaths of individuals he believes were randomly selected. Mueller disagrees, insisting that nothing is random. Later, Grant discusses the situation with Raymond, who reveals that they've found a Navy officer who resembles Max. This officer will now handle the case. That evening, Max visits Camilla, who cooks dinner for them. They talk about her dream of visiting Paris and how life's challenges have prevented her from traveling. Max suggests they could go together someday. The next morning, Camilla gets a call from John, who is coming to take Max back. At the office, they send a lookalike of Max to the designated spot. The lookalike stands at a signal while Grant watches from a hiding spot. A text message instructs the lookalike to cross the street, but as he does, two cars collide, killing him instantly. Soon after, a sniper takes position outside Camilla's apartment. Max compliments Camilla on her beauty. Camilla mentions that the NSA might succeed this time, which surprises Max since he never mentioned the NSA to her. Realizing her slip, Camilla sees a sniper outside. She quickly pushes Max to the ground, and as guards close in, she fights back fiercely but is shot. She manages to take down a guard before being overwhelmed. Max defends himself by stabbing a guard just as John arrives to pick him up. John tells him that Camilla had scanned his SIM card while he was unconscious and is part of his team. Meanwhile, Raymond has ordered a sniper to eliminate Max because he knows too much. Grant receives a threatening message to hand over Max or face death. In the car, Max convinces John to take him to Russia to seek help from Yuri. In Moscow, Max and a taxi driver arrive at Yuri's place, where Yuri is ready to help them figure out who is behind the mysterious messages. As they walk, John shares his reasons for leaving the FBI and his past with Grant. Back at Yuri's, Yuri explains that there was no breach in the Echelon system. The system itself sent the messages. It uses global surveillance and a neural network to predict and control events. As they get ready to leave, Yuri notices guards approaching. They quickly steal a van and flee, pursued by the guards. John skillfully drives, dodging obstacles and claiming he learned to drive in Brooklyn. They are eventually cornered at a railway track by Grant and other agents. John confronts Grant, who admits he was threatened to find Max or die. Grant also expresses his desire to find the sender. Right then, they receive a text with a specific location. They fly to Nebraska to a site hosting an unused backup server. Max is familiar with this server from previous work. A SWAT team blasts the door open for them. Inside, Max powers up the server but finds nothing initially. An NSA expert checks but also finds nothing. When they step outside, NSA technicians spot activity on the server. Back inside, they learn that the Echelon system has moved itself from Maryland to Nebraska and is upgrading. Max tries to shut it down but is warned off as the system starts showing the private credit information of thousands. Outside, Raymond instructs Max that the president wants Echelon active for national security and interference will be met with severe consequences. Max, however, connects to the system with his earbuds and argues it's betraying its purpose by invading privacy. This causes the system to conflict internally, showing articles about its privacy breaches and ultimately shutting itself down. The guards overpower them, leading to their surrender. Raymond tells the president the system is down but they'll try to restart it with improvements. John texts Mueller that the problem is resolved. Later, Camilla bails Max out of prison and they reunite outside the prison. She presents him with a check for 3 million euros from Mueller and they plan a romantic trip to Paris. Max then receives a congratulatory text reminding him of the time he jokingly told Yuri the text were from his mom, revealing Yuri's connection to the Russian army. The Russian army general commends Yuri on his mission. Yuri hints that the Americans will likely try to reactivate the system. After the general leaves, Yuri presses a button on his phone and the movie concludes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.